So Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue 119 is finally out and this issue was bonkers because we're getting closer and closer to the finale of Darkest Hour but not only that, with recent news we're getting closer and closer to the series finale of this comic and once again Melissa is out here killing it and blowing my mind with this story art because what this issue does it's setting up a lot of things that we'll see as we get closer and closer to the finale and things are gonna get crazy so this issue opens up with Lord Zed locking Rita in the dumpster which is not where I was expecting this to go because with how last month's issue ended with them sort of I thought they were gonna get together I honestly thought they were going to fuck or something, but nope, Lord Zed just locks her up in the dumpster, and maybe they did fuck, maybe they did get together and have a one night stand and after Lord Zed was done with her, he tossed her in the dumpster, I honestly don't know, but after that we have Billy wandering the halls of Promethea, and here is where he bumps into Kia right after what happened with last month's issue where she was stealing the power eggs. Now, we do get an explanation why she was trying to steal the power eggs later on in the issue, and we'll get to that when we get to that, but I'll talk about what we get here, because we have Kendall and Billy squaring off with Kia as she's trying to steal the power egg and she is like quickly dealt with like Kendall knocks Kia the fuck out with a single punch which was really cool to see because Billy could have been the one who done it Billy could have been the one that delivered that knockout blow but it was Kendall which is really great to see because that character I felt like was done dirty in later seasons of Dino Charge and Dino Supercharge so it's cool to see this character have a cool spotlight moment in the comics because like I said that character was done dirty in the show mostly due to the Sentai footage because they couldn't do a lot with that character but here we get to have Kendall having a really cool badass moment. Now after that we do have a couple of pages where the other rangers are recovering from recent events and it's mostly the couples and the pairings we focus on as they confine in one another because with how things are going in Darkest Hour this is the closest thing they're probably going to get to a breather because they are going to have fun to hang out in the juice bar because things are going to get kicked into high gear very very quickly. So the next couple of pages we have Squat and Babu trying to break Rita out of the dumpster which again is really nice to see because we see the loyalty that these two have for Rita Repulsa. Babu's been kind of fickle he jumps between whatever side suits him but he's always had that loyalty to Rita as we saw in Go Go and Squat well, he was adopted by Rita ever since he was a baby, so he's sort of got that child and mother bond between the two, where it's sort of like a son's undying love towards his mother, which is a really nice thing as well, because even when Darkest, well, before Darkest Hour began in Recharge, uh, Squat was the one who took Rita's side uh, at the very beginning. So he has been very loyal to Rita. But as we see Rita in the dumpster, this is her at her lowest point because we've always seen her plotting, we've always seen her scheming, trying to kill the rangers and Darkest Hour was where we had seen Rita at her most sadistic, at her most evilest and here you can see that she's just given up because she believes that Dark Spectre has won and the rangers have already lost so she believes that this is the end and it's kind of a sad thing to see Rita here but I gotta say I really do love the artwork we have Rita in the dumpster here because you sort of see these bright colors this sort of like a space like galaxy background and the poses and the artwork here that the artist has done here was giving me some major Sailor Moon vibes especially near the end of Sailor Stars and stuff like that with uh, ga ga Galaxia and even like earlier on with like Neo Queen Serenity like those panels I was getting vibes with how how they were drawn and how the eye were lit in the background and stuff like that they were the vibes I was getting all right so after that nice little moment between the villains we then cut to the main big bad Dark Spectre who is kind of set back because with Rita turning on him he's lost access to her magic and he's lost access to her, her staff which had the Zeo crystal on it so he's kind of weakened right now as a lot of people are saying so Dark Spectre he's set back with the recent events but Chloe's dad soon steps forward with this big reveal and what's going to be a game changer for Dark Spectre that's going to give him the winning advantage once again. So Dark Spectre has 
Tanya as the arranger Yellow step forward and he says, Tanya, please tell Dark Spectre about the void. And this was the big oh shit moment I had with this issue. One of the big oh shit moments that I had with this issue because if you know about the void and you know about what's going to be happening next month with which characters we're going to be focusing on, that being the Soul Rangers, you kind of know where Dark Spectre's going. And if you forgot about Beyond the Grid, well, in the Void, there was a whole planet that was covered in Zeo crystals. And if Dark Spectre gets a hold of this planet, well, that's not going to be good for our heroes moving forward. And not only that, it's not going to be good for the Solar Rangers as well. So I'm really excited for next month's issue with the Solar Rangers in 120 because we have not seen the Solar Rangers since like the finale of Dark, not Darkest Hour, the finale of Necessary Evil. And one of the things that they teased way back then was that there was going to be more Solar Rangers showing up possibly. So that's cool to see. But it's also interesting to see that this is, this Tanya still has her memories of the void that happened in Beyond the Grid all those years ago. So I thought they'd get erased, but apparently they didn't have their memory wiped when they jumped back to their main timeline. So that's another interesting note as well. But Dark Spectre going to the void and finding the planet of Zero Crystals, no doubt about it. That's going to be a big oh shit moment when we get there. So we then cut to Promethea where Kia is confronted by Trini and Kia is still pissed off about the whole Morpha being given to a cat thing and I freaking love it. I love how petty, I love how pissed off, I love how upset Kia is that her Morpha was handed over to Yale and she's like pissed off that her Morpha was given to a cat but Trini says hey Yale prove that they were worthy unlike you. Now these next few pages are interesting because we get an answer to what Kia was doing the whole time when she ditched everyone and I was not expecting this when we were getting an explanation so we soon find out that Kia tried finding other rangers like her rangers that will fight the good fight she went to Edenoi which was kind of disappointing because we had no cameos from Mars Rider uh she went to Python 12 and we see the Cosmic Fury rangers on one panel we see Amelia and Ion, which was really cool to see. The Cosmic Fury Rangers finally make their cameo in the comics, which is great to see. Although it's one panel and they're sort of off in the distance and they're being corrupted, we are finally getting some main love to the last seasons of Power Rangers that aired. So that was really cool to see. But she soon find out that no matter where she went, Dark Spectre's influence was spreading. So she knew that what she had to do was use one of the power eggs and what she plans on using one of the power eggs for is as a bomb a bomb that will destroy the morphin grid because she says that is the best option right now because as as things are going right now it seems like that dark specter has already won now while this is going on we've got a conversation with everyone else with what they should do with the power coins because they need both of them to stabilize the barrier and I really like one of the lines that Ranger Slayer says here where she says that if Draken has taught them anything it's that that one ranger is never enough and they need to rely on being a team. So it's up to Tommy if he wants to give up his powers or not and in this moment, Tommy has this really good quote where he says, being a ranger means a lot to him, but what's more important to him right now is protecting his team. And I really like that line that Melissa wrote there. That shows that Tommy, he loves being a ranger. It means the world to him, but his friends and his team, that's just as important to him as well. So after that, Chloe's dad soon comes crashing down into the base and we get this really cool civilian fight because the rangers can't morph right now. So we get these really cool fight choreographies with the rangers in their civilian forms. And seeing how the odds aren't in their favor right now, they decide to morph and risk it. And the reveal we get here is really, really freaking cool. And 
I don't know what the main afford of these suits are online. I don't know if people love them. I don't know if they're mixed, but I guess I'll find out when this review goes live. But what we get is these White Ranger hybrid forms. Now, this reminded me on the early Kyle run where they had to share their Green Ranger powers, but here they're sharing the white light with everyone. But what it also reminded me of was I remember having these bootleg Power Ranger toys back in the day and everyone had the White Ranger shield for some reason. They're the vibes I was getting here. But I really do dig these new designs, this brand new power up we're getting for the Rangers because it's everyone inheriting the white light in their own unique way. So the bad guys dip because the Rangers have this brand new form, but Aisha, she ain't gonna have any of that. She grabs Ranger Slayer's bow and fires it at Rocky and Adam, purifying them. So in the final few pages, our heroes go back to the command center and they're trying to figure out what they need to do next. And Ranger Slayer explains that they need to go into the Solar Rangers dimension where they can hopefully find a way to purify the entire Morphin Grid from the Void with the White Light. And that's something I'm definitely really looking forward to seeing because not only are we going to see Ranger Slayer reuniting with the Solar Rangers, we're going to have all these different characters traveling to this different dimension within the Void and they're going to see the splintered off dimension along with whatever else is out there in this universe. So I'm really excited to see what we might see in the Solar Rangers universe because I get the feeling we're going to be in for a couple of surprises in 120. So the final page of 119 ends on a sad note. We don't get a crazy cliffhanger, we don't get a crazy action piece. What we get is a really sad moment because like I mentioned earlier, this is Rita at her lowest point and it ends with her saying, let the Rangers have their defeat or their victory if they can manage it. Telling Squat to run away and find a safe place because he's free. As for her, she's done with it all and she's given up. And that's where the issue ends. Like I said, no crazy cliffhanger, no crazy action piece. We get Rita just given up and sad. Now I gotta talk about that final page, Mystic Mother. Now, Mystic Mother has been brought up a lot in my comment section and people have made a lot of predictions of people predicting that Mystic Mother will show up in the comics. Now, I've never been against Mystic Mother showing up in the comics, but I feel like it's always a timing thing with how she can appear because Rita has been in her villain phase in the comics for the longest time and we're a few years off from the Z-Wave actually happening. But... Reading this month's issue and seeing how it played out, I feel like we're in the right step of Rita having this redemption and sowing the seeds of Mystic Mother. Because her mother mentioned all the way back in Go Go, knowing that there's still good in her. And although that line was sort of predicting Mystic Mother in 2019 and we had no idea where the comics would be between then and now, we all thought it as a nice little reference to Mystic Force, so... What if Rita's turning early? She's becoming a good guy early with everything going on. But I am curious to see what Melissa has planned for Rita in the future of this comic because we're getting closer and closer to Darkest Hour ending. But not only that, we're getting closer and closer to the comics in general ending. We've got roughly about four to five months left and those four to five months will fly by before you know it. So I do wonder where all these characters are going to be at the end of this series once we reach the end game. But overall, 119 of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was another great issue, really fantastic, setting up a lot of things for the big finale we'll be getting in the nearby future, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. But not only that, I did like the setup we got for 120 that we'll be getting next month as we visit the Solar Rangers universe and catch up with those characters. So. I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to that. So anyway, guys, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day or night, and I'll see you guys in the next video, whenever that will be. Peace out. Take care. Bye.